Welcome to Aquarian Diary, where we discuss issues around the emerging age of Aquarius. I'm your host, John Irving. Thank you for joining me. Greetings all, it is February 1st, 2022. At least that's when I'm recording this. We'll see when I actually get it published. First of all, I want to thank very much Irish Granny Taro for having me on her channel recently. We had a kind of meandering discussion and conversation, touching on a lot of interesting topics. I really enjoyed it. It was my first actual collaboration of that kind with anyone, and uh, so I was a bit nervous going into it. So again, thanks very much to her for introducing me to her much more substantial audience than mine. I really appreciate it and look forward to more collaborations in the future, if that's in the cards. Today I want to talk about another very interesting transit that is coming up soon, which will be exact on April 12th, 2022, and that is transiting Jupiter conjunct Neptune in Pisces. Now Jupiter orbits the Sun every 12 years. That in and of itself might not seem particularly significant, However, it has been 166 years since Jupiter conjuncted Neptune in Pisces. One of the interesting things about this transit is that prior to the invention of telescopes, astrology was defined by only the visible planets, those that we could see with the naked eye. For example, Uranus was discovered in 1781, and Neptune was discovered in 1846. So. In ancient astrology, Jupiter was the ruler of Pisces, and modern ruler of Pisces is Neptune, which, you know, based on our understanding these days, makes a lot more sense. But there's still strong relationship or affinity with these energies and Jupiter, for example, with Pisces. So we have the traditional ruler of Pisces and the contemporary ruler of Pisces, both in Pisces at this time, and we have both of these energies combining. And the last time Jupiter and Neptune conjuncted or joined in Neptune was in 1856. That was 166 years ago. Now at the time of this conjunction there will be a positive aspect with the nodes, a trine to the south node and a sextile to the north node in Taurus and Scorpio respectively. This speaks to a faded or karmic aspect to this event relating to changes in course or direction or path or destiny. Again, these are positive aspects, at least as far as we here are concerned. So what does this mean? Let me try and uh, express this in a condensed form. I don't want this to get too long. Neptune rules the twelfth house, as does the sign of Pisces. So the twelfth house is the house of endings, essentially. It is kind of a dematerializing energy which follows all of the growth and expansion and culmination of all of the other previous houses. So this would be the place where cycles would end and, you know, on a higher octave, illusions and fantasies and limitations would be stripped away and removed. It's kind of an ego-dissolving sort of energy. But, you know, the Twelfth House and Pisces can be extremely intuitive to spiritual energies or psychic phenomenon or psychic experiences. Many people who are able to channel or express psychic abilities or have uh, profound spiritual experiences have some planets or significant points in the Twelfth House. Also, some very notable celebrities and artists, musicians, and so forth have strong Neptune or 12th house placements because it kind of allows them to channel energy. But on a lower level or a lower manifestation, because all energies have you know, positive and negative aspects to them or positive and negative expressions, on a lower expression, the 12th house can rule things like escapism, and fantasy or delusion and self-delusion. I talked a bit about this in my USA Neptune opposition, natal Neptune episode. So if one doesn't handle these kinds of energies very well, people can have difficulty being grounded in reality. 
and can be susceptible to illusions and fantasies and delusions, self-inflicted or inflicted by others. And now we have Jupiter coming into the mix here, which is considered to be the great benefic, the most beneficial planet in astrology, because it tends to expand everything it comes in contact with, and it definitely does have a lucky, positive influence. It's a lovely energy that rules Sagittarius, and so, like I said, it's very expansive, and it's considered the guru or the teacher. And so, when Jupiter comes into contact with Neptune in Pisces, it's basically going to expand all of those energies that I was discussing. Sometimes the expansion can be orders of magnitude, because Jupiter is by far the largest planet in our solar system. It's enormous. But it's a gaseous planet. It doesn't have a lot of physical substance to it. The positive aspects of this Jupiter conjuncting Neptune and Pisces can be almost like a gateway of expansion into the unseen realms of reality, which would include things like psychic phenomenon and spiritual experiences, where we transcend the limitations of the material plane and come in contact with other dimensions of reality. And I'm getting really strong chills here as I say that right now. I have Jupiter in Pisces in the 12th natally. Ah, this is an energy I'm quite familiar with. But, like I said, in its lower manifestation, it can result in it being extremely ungrounded in quote-unquote reality, or all of Saturn's domain. Saturn rules physical, tangible aspects of reality. And so, depending upon one's state of awareness, you know, this can manifest quite differently. Now, in terms of the mundane astrology, I think that we are going to see perhaps a lot of very strange things occurring in reality, quote-unquote reality, that may seem to be amplified, both the positive expressions of this combination of energy and the negative ones. And one of the other things that's associated with the 12th house and uh, Neptune is the potential for people to engage in escapism because they can find being in material reality too harsh. And so one of the ways of coping with that is to engage in forms of escapism, which can include things like drugs and alcohol and other stimulants, or it can even express itself through compulsive sexual behavior and things like that. The 12th house also rules institutions and things like hospitals because people who have severe mental health issues can end up in those kinds of places and prisons as well. And it also governs things like uh, enemies that we can't see. This would be traditionally things like viruses, diseases, and plagues because they're invisible. And the mechanisms behind them in the past were not understood even possibly things like spirits and things that don't manifest materially, but that are actually a part of our reality, whether we're aware of it or not. In many ways, all manner of boundaries can be dissolved, for better or for worse, under such influences. So I'm not saying that to get people worried. Generally, this is going to be very positive, especially for those who are spiritually oriented. It's an incredible gateway, and like I said, this hasn't occurred for 166 years, so this is a pretty rare event. Neptune and Jupiter conjuncting in Pisces, at least. Now, I have been uh, wanting to express this, and this seems like a good place to do it. There's a lot of astrologers who do videos on new moons and full moons, which is great, but, you know, those occur every 28 days. So they aren't typically life-altering unless they happen to be a solar or lunar eclipse occurring in tight orb to a significant point in your natal chart. Whereas, as I've explained, this is a once-every-166-year event, and it has influences that are unquestionably potent and important, relatively. In terms of how this might manifest again in mundane reality, I think that one of the things that we're going to have to be aware of is Neptune transiting Pisces can be 
associated with a lot of things like really crazy conspiracy theories and people being detached from reality and living in alternate realities. And many of us are familiar with what's going on in the world these days. And so those kinds of expressions I would expect to be amplified as well, where literally you could look at somebody and go like, what planet are you on? And where are you coming from? Because you seem to be completely detached from reality. So trying to remain grounded at this time is probably more important than ever before in our lives in many ways. And there are exercises for how to do that. I have published some of those myself, and there are many other good rituals that people can perform to do grounding, and to do so on a daily basis would be advised. Like I said, if you are fortunate and you're in a place or a space where you can engage in things like meditation or spiritual practice, this could be phenomenally more chills, really strong chills here right now. This could be very, very beneficial and you may have some extraordinary experiences because dreams are associated with the 12th house as well. Pay attention to your dream and your sleep state where, you know, on some levels we kind of leave the physical form and and we're engaging on other dimensions in our sleep often. And so those kinds of experiences can be tremendously heightened as well. One of the other things that uh, Neptune is associated with is compassion and unconditional love and self-sacrifice and selfless service. And so acts of kindness and gratitude can be especially beneficial during this time as well taking care of the needy and those who require care, volunteering and helping others in need, and acts of charity, tremendously beneficial and rewarding karmically and otherwise feeding your soul, basically. These are the kind of energies where we can come into contact with the divine in ways where many of the barriers or thresholds to doing that might be less challenging to overcome. Those doorways will be open and more readily accessible than they would be normally. So this is a very rare occurrence, like I said, and it's interesting because there's so many other very significant things going on right now. I've talked about the USA Pluto return. I've talked about the Neptune opposition, Neptune that's occurring in the United States and how it's squaring the natal Mars. Well, this Jupiter conjunct Neptune will in many ways amplify many of those aspects. And I think it's something that people should pay attention to. Now, one of the things about the 12th house, again, is that, you know, it has to do with letting go because it's the ending. It's the 12th house, you know, before we begin a new cycle in the first. And so this is a phenomenal opportunity, very strong chills again here, for people to let go of their burdens, the things that they have carried with them in this lifetime and in others that they no longer need to carry, that to lighten your load, to release and let go. Because we will come into a new cycle of growth and beginnings. You know, as we are moving into the Aquarian age, we have to dispose of a lot of karmic gunk and garbage and baggage from the Piscean age as we shift into these higher dimensional energies of the Aquarian age. And it's kind of a, because of Jupiter is a great benefic, this is kind of a blessing energy. You have at your disposal a lot of opportunities and energies to help with this transcendence of the past and transcendence of your own remorse and guilt and pain and suffering and fears and regrets and things like that, the opportunities are amplified to release them and other outmoded karmic habits and patterns and attachments and beliefs in a very beneficial way because of this Jupiter transit. And again, we're probably going to also see this manifest in material reality in, in weird ways because people who don't channel this energy and its positive expression, like I said, can engage in all kinds of really weird, strange behavior, or what will seem strange to us at least. This transit will be in a two-degree orb from April 2nd to April 23rd of 2022. That is the most intense phase. Again, the exact date is April 12th when it's at peak intensity. And these larger scale transits, you know, to some extent, this transit is already in effect as long as Jupiter is in Pisces. It's just that it reaches a peak intensity, as I've just described. So again, we have the great benefic Jupiter, expansive Jupiter, 
blessing kind of energies coming together with Neptune, which is a very spiritualized energy on a higher expression, where we transcend physical form and limitations and can engage with spiritual dimensions. Phenomenally interesting transit. And again, this is another one of those things, like I said, hasn't occurred for 166 years. So again, we should consider ourselves fortunate to be here now and to be able to experience this. Oh, one of the thing, uh, actually, too, by the way, is that <laughs> I think people should kind of be paying attention to things like possible bubbles in things like real estate and the stock market, because these energies combined can take things to levels that they would not normally or probably shouldn't go to. You know, there can be this tendency for things to become extremely exaggerated under these influences, especially if people are susceptible to deception, delusion, or self-delusion, or delusion by others. Again, there is this altruistic and visionary and egalitarian energy that can be sort of associated with this, and that's all positive. But we're all kind of operating on different levels. If this conjunction is occurring in close aspect to significant points in your natal chart, this could be extremely significant or extremely pronounced for you, depending on what planets it's making aspects with and in what house it's falling in. Finally, I suppose I would be remiss if I did not mention this, and that is that Neptune and Pisces are obviously associated with water, and having Jupiter combined with Neptune and Pisces so tightly might result in significant water-related events like flooding or torrential rains or downpours. This has been something that has often been predicted under such circumstances. Anyway, I hope this has been helpful and you find it interesting. I think this is going to be an amazing experience for those of us who are spiritually inclined. These are truly epic and historic times. Thanks again to Irish Granny Tarot. Please check out her video. I did a little brief video with a link to that video on her channel. All the best and talk to you soon.